Hey guys, this section is about systems and processes. Actually, it's more about PV diagrams. Some basic definitions first. A thermodynamic system is a defined macroscopic region of space that is studied using the principles concerning heat and its relation to, to other forms of energy and work. All space uh, in the universe outside the thermodynamic system is known as the surrounding. Uh, you can call it the environment or the reservoir. Although in practice, this term is reserved for those parts of the environment that might affect the system directly. A system is separated from its surroundings by a boundary, which does not have to be a real physical thing. Exchanges of heat, work or matter between the system and the surroundings might take place across the boundary. So, you can classify the system by specifying what you allow to cross the boundary. With this idea, uh, we can classify the systems in three. Uh, open systems, where anything can happen. Mass, work or energy can be exchanged. Then you have closed systems. Um, energy can flow in and out uh, in the forms of heat or work. No problem with that. But no matter can exit or enter. And finally, isolated systems are the ones where nothing, absolutely nothing, lives or gets in. An isolated system in thermodynamics is what you will call a closed system in classical mechanics. When a system in equilibrium state goes to some different equilibrium state, we say that a process took place. A thermodynamic process is basically the path through, a, through the space of thermodynamic variables that takes the system from one state to another state. So what is this space of thermodynamic variables? Well, we know it. It's, it's called a PV diagram. It's just pressure versus volume. So a thermodynamic process is the path from a state 1 to a state 2. Obviously, the area under the curve is the work done by the system. So, in order to calculate work, we need to know the path it takes. So, work is not a state function. This is why differential dW for work is called an inexact differential. A state function is a thermodynamic variable which depends only on the current state of the system, not on the path taken to reach that state. Just like internal energy, for example totally independent of the path. So now you can classify the processes depending on what kind of path it takes. An isobaric process is one where the pressure is kept constant. So if it is constant, then you can just take it out of the integral and then the work is just the pressure times the change in volume. An isochoric process is one where the volume is kept constant. So, if there is no change in volume, then there is no work. Now, for those uh, who have a white belt in physics, the, the beginners, I will explain the reason why there is no work here. Work, as everybody knows, is force times distance. I need to push an object to have work, like this. But if I apply a force and I don't move the object, then there is no work no matter how big the force is. In a similar way, the gas applies a force on the walls of the container, but the gas does not move the walls. Therefore, there is no work here. Now, let's look at the case uh, where pressure changes as volume changes. Let's look at the isothermal process. This is one where temperature is kept constant. But to know what path it takes, here in my diagram, we need to know how pressure changes as volume changes, right? In other words, we need to know the equation of a state, something that relates temperature, pressure and volume. So let's look at the case of the ideal gas. An ideal gas is a theoretical gas composed of a set of randomly moving, non-interacting point particles. The ideal gas concept is so useful not only because the simplicity of its equation of a state, but because it has applications everywhere in science. At normal conditions, such as standard temperature and pressure, most real gases behave like an ideal gas. 
Okay, so this is the equation of a state. Now what? So constant temperature, constant number of particles, and this here is the Boltzmann constant. All this is just a constant over the volume. So the graph looks like this. If you want to know the work done by the gas, just integrate this. Now, I want to point out one more thing here. It turns out that constant temperature implies no change of internal energy. You will see that in the next video. Now, let's look at the adiabatic process. This is one where there is no exchange of heat between the environment and the system. Adiabatic processes can occur if the container of the system has thermally insulated walls. You will also see in the next video that the equation to follow is this one. Please don't confuse the adiabatic process with isothermal process. Now, a cyclic process is a closed curve in the PV diagram. It means that the system goes back to its initial state. Remember that I said before that the energy is an exact differential? So the change in energy only depends on the initial and final points, not on the path. So here the final and the initial points are the same. So the change in energy in any cyclic process is always zero. Now if you want to calculate the work, um, the work done by the system, then you can just choose a point here and I'm gonna call it uh, V prime and identify the equations for pressure here and here. I'm going to call this one P1 and this will be P2. Now if I integrate this, I find the work done on this part of the process where I'm going from this point to that point. Look at the limits of integration. And if I integrate this one, then I find the work done on this part of the process, where I'm going back from that point to the initial state. If I add the work um, here and the work done here, I will see that I'm actually subtracting these two areas, this area minus this one. So I'm left with the area inside the closed curve. Many times you will hear the word quasi-static. A quasi-static process is one where it happens slow enough to maintain thermal equilibrium at all times. And finally, a process is reversible if the total change in entropy is zero. All these definitions, you should be writing them down. Now, what is all this talking if I don't give you any problem? Well, let's look at some problems. I will solve this step by step. Let's try to find the work done and the heat absorbed by an ideal gas in an isothermal expansion. First, when you hear the words ideal gas, you automatically think of this equation. So you know what P is. Next thing is that you know that the process is isothermal. So the temperature here is constant. So you know how the graph looks like. Now notice one thing, constant temperature implies constant internal energy. So there is no change in internal energy. And if you take a look at the first law of thermodynamics, uh, you will see that the work done by the system is the same as the heat gained by the system. So if you find the work, then automatically you know the heat. So let me visualize what is happening here. Let's say this is the container with the ideal gas. Uh, and here one of the walls is free to move and here is the heat from the environment and this is what keeps the temperature constant assuming that the process happens slow enough to maintain thermal equilibrium at all times and then the gas expands to some final volume and some final pressure now the work is just the area under this curve integrating this will give this now notice that the fact that the temperature is constant implies that PV is also constant and you can write this ratio as this ratio. So you can write the work done by the gas in terms of volume or in terms of pressure. Now I want to show you one thing, so let me keep this answer right here. 
This is for those of you who are looking at the videos of statistical mechanics. Notice that you can calculate the work done on the gas as the difference in Helmholtz free energy. In the video of the ideal gas and the partition function, we calculated the Helmholtz free energy. So let me write it here. Replacing this in here, and the ln of this minus ln of that, and that's it. Now notice that this is the work done on the gas, and this is the work done by the gas. This is the negative of this. It totally makes sense. Next problem. Let's find the work done in a cyclic process consisting of an isothermal expansion, an isochoric process, and an adiabatic compression. You can break down any cycle into pieces, and each of these pieces will have different properties. Depending on the process taking the system from one state to another, some parts of the cycle will be reversible, and some will not be. Like, um, like in this part, for example, adiabatic processes are reversible because there is no exchange of heat with the environment, provided that the external pressure is very very close to the pressure of the gas, in other words, if the process is quasi-static. Now, because we are talking about a cyclic process, there is no change in internal energy here, because the starting point is the same as the final point. And again, by invoking the first law of thermodynamics, we see that the heat is the same as the amount of work done by the system. Ok, so let's see what's happening here. We start with the gas, with some initial conditions that I, I will call P1, T1, V1, pressure, temperature and volume. They are related by the equation of a state. Then we expand this gas, uh, keeping the temperature constant, because it's an isothermal process. This can happen if we allow the gas to expand quasi-statically, meaning a slow enough to be in thermal equilibrium at all times. Now in this state, uh, call this pressure P2, it has a bigger volume, and now I'm gonna call this V2, it has the same temperature, because we kept that constant. Then we keep the volume constant, and we decrease the pressure. How can we do that, physically? Um, you can you can lower the temperature. Remember that temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy of the particles in the gas. So decreasing the temperature means that you slow down the particles. When you do that, then particles apply less force to the walls of the container when they hit the walls. Less force, then less pressure. So notice that uh, T1 is greater than T2. Now we can close the system with uh, thermal insulated walls, so no heat exchange between the environment and the system, and now we compress it until it reaches the initial state. Notice that as you compress this, um, then the temperature has to increase. These two functions of pressure here and, and here are the processes of expansion and compression, so I'm gonna call this uh, P of expansion, and this will be P of compression. To find the work, you just need to integrate this minus this one. But first, find out what this constant A is, and also this exponent right here. For the ideal gas case, this exponent is 5 over 3, actually. If you want to know where this comes from, uh, I have another video on ideal gas and heat capacity. I don't really want to touch the topic of heat capacity right now. Now look at this curve. Every point on this curve is calculated from this equation. So this point right here is this, because it happens at V1. But this point is also equal to nk t1 over V1. And from this relationship you can, you can solve for A. And as I said before, this exponent here is 5 over 3, and so your constant will be nk t1 v1 to the 2 over 3. And now you have all your constants. You can also choose another point, uh, the one on v2 for example. But then your constant will be in terms of t2. 
and remember that I'm also integrating this function and this one is in terms of t1 so that's why I chose this point because I want everything to have the same temperature but if you if you wrote already everything in terms of t2 then there's no problem it's it's fine if you did it notice that you can compare that relation with the relation I use and you will also get a relationship for temperatures and volumes this is actually a very well-known result for adiabatic processes so you have all your constants okay back to the problem now you can replace everything in the integral and we get this and put the limits of integration and we get the work done by the gas everything here is in terms of volume but you can also write it in terms of pressure take a look at these two points they give you this kind of relationship and you can write work uh, in terms of P1 and P2 you can also write um, this in terms of temperature take a look at the adiabatic compression here this gives this relationship and you can use it to rewrite V1 over V2 I hope this was useful and practice as many problems as you can is the best way to learn and good luck